This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be blessed by the seed of the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. Never, never, never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. You may be seated. Lord, that's who we are. We are that chosen generation. And we really are. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And the whole purpose is to show forth the praises of the Lord God Almighty to the world. In Jesus' name. This is the second lesson uh, on uh, the race we run. The race we run. My God, my God. And church, we are truly in a race. I want you to also know that the devil, our enemy, is in one too. Being aware of this, we must prepare ourselves and use every spiritual weapon at our disposal along the course to deal with him and deal with him every time he raises his ugly head with deadly force. We got to deal with him with deadly force. We want him to always know that he can't come back this way. You know, we want him to know that we're not playing with him. We want him to know that we're not going to compromise with him. Amen. You know, uh, uh, we, you, you, you just got to do that because uh, the enemy does not like to take no for an answer. In John 10, 10, it tells us why he comes at us. And we're going to deal with that a little bit later. But right now, I want, on last week, I had the reader to read out of uh, the Message Bible, he Hebrews 12, 1, verses 1 and 2. But I want her to read the Amplified today. If you would do that for me. The Amplified. Verses 1 and 2, Amplified. Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, take your time too, who are born testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance. Anything that's unnecessary that we're carrying, that we have, that we're dealing with, is an encumbrance. I think Jesus said, oh, my burdens are light. So we need to take off anything that and pull off anything that we definitely don't need to be trying to run a race with. Come on. Throw aside every encumbrance, every unnecessary weight, and that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. And let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. A steady persistence, a steady and active persistence, not in and out, up and down, round and round, you know, but be persistent, persevere, uh, be regular, be, you know, just be where you're supposed to be in running the race, hallelujah. Uh, get rid of stuff that's clinging to you, that would uh, try to tangle your feet up and keep you uh, all messed up and and from running uh, as fast as you can and as safe as you can. Get all of that from around your, 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 your feet, the bottom of your feet. You can't run like that. Amen? Amen. Continue. Verse 2. Looking away from all that will distract. Keep your focus. That's what that's saying. Um, to, to look away from what will distract you, that just said, keep your focus and keep your eyes on the prize. Come on. 
looking away from all that will distract to Jesus. So who? Jesus. Hallelujah. Who is the leader and the source of our faith. Giving the first incentive for our belief and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Church, this these verse said, this verse says, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth. They, they have heard the truth. They have borne testimony to it. They, they've been witnesses to it. They have heard the truth. And it goes on to say, we have people cheering us on. That's what that cloud of witnesses are doing. They are cheering us on. I can't quit. I can't throw in the towel. I can't stop. I can't give up. I can't cave in. You know, I got people, uh, that cloud of witnesses cheering me on. You know, pastors among. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We have people cheering us on. But we can't see it. That's what's going on in, in the Christian life. You know, we got that cloud of witnesses. And then picture running the race on the track and the stands on every side filled with people who are cheering for you. Picture that. You know, the word says we are surrounded by the saints who have gone on before us. And that is meant to encourage us to run well. That's what that's all about. We got to remember that there are those that have already gone before us and, and, and they are watching us. They are watching the race we are running. They, 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 want, they, they don't want us to become weary and well-doing because they already know that in due season, if you don't cave in, if you don't quit, you're going to get the prize. You're going to make it. We're going to make it, church. We just can't cave in. We just can't give up. We can't, just can't uh, get discouraged. You see, I found out something. Disappointments happen. You, they happen. You're disappointed, you know, maybe that you didn't win first place. Or you're disappointed that you didn't uh, uh, get all A's on your card. Or you're disappointed that uh, you and the fellow didn't marry or whatever. But discouragement is a choice. Discouragement is something you choose to be. I don't choose to be discouraged. Amen. I hope you caught that. Yes. I really don't choose to be discouraged. Amen. Fellow runners, we are in this race only to win. You see, those that have gone on before us and made it are not only our examples, but according to Hebrew 11, they are also our cheerleaders. No matter what the hardship they went through, no matter what the test was, no matter what the trial was along their way, they still made it because they didn't quit. Make it, you know, to make it, you got to keep, you got to keep at it. You got to keep going. You can't quit. No matter what mistake they made along the way, they still made it. And make no mistake, we're going to run our race and we're going to make it too. Hello? Hello? We gonna make it too. Let me explain uh, uh, to you the type of race we are in because sometimes I don't think the believer knows and understands this. First of all, there are two types that I know. One is a sprint and the other is a marathon. A sprint covers a short distance and is over pretty quick. A marathon, on the other hand, covers miles and miles and may last for several hours. But the difference is not only one of distance and time, it is also in the amount of stamina they require from each one. You got to have your body in shape. You got to be in shape. You got to have your breathing together. You got to have strong lungs. You got to have your, your uh, muscles together. You know, you got to have your feet together. You know, it, it, it's just not about distance for, uh, and all of that. It's also an amount of stamina they require from each run. You got to withstand some, some distance. You got to withstand some time. 
You're going, you're going uh, further. You're going the long route. And, you, and it's going to take some time. You're not going to sprint this one out. And we're not going to sprint it out either. Amen. If you have ever run a race or sat on the sidelines and watched as others ran, you know the power of hearing people cheer one another on. You know how you felt cheering your team. And that young man running with that ball down the field, you were probably running with him. Long as, you know, he running down the field, you running with him, cheering him on. With this in mind, saints, you know we are not in a sprint but a marathon. And I cannot say this enough. We are in it only to win. Last time we were with you, we shared that, number one, you have to show up at the starting line. And you do this by faith. You, you got to show up. You know, you, your starting line, your starting gate could have been in Sunday school. Or summer camp. Or a month-long revival. Or nine-month revival. But you showed up. Amen. See, God was uh, 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 getting you ready for a brand new type of race. And you had to show up. Number two, I told you you have to enjoy the race you're running and you do this by faith. Whether you like your starting line or not, you know that this time at camp or this time at the revival or this time uh, in, in that, uh, that from week to week and month to month revival, you knew something was different taking place. You knew something was happening to you and it started from the inside out. That's the Lord tenderizing your heart. He was tenderizing your heart and he was getting you ready to run your real race. All this time you had been marking time. But now it was time for you to show up, get into it. And then third, you have to run your, you have to run your race. Not somebody else's. And you do that by faith. But why she keeps saying you do this by faith and you run by faith and and just go to the starting line by faith because everything you do for God is going to have to be done by faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please Him. It's going to be done by faith. Mm -hmm. I couldn't step up to the plate in the flesh. Amen. Let me make it real plain. I, there's no way I could have stepped up and started doing this in the flesh. I've been long gone and hard to find. You, you can't do God's kingdom business in the flesh. The flesh can't last. The flesh can't hold up. The flesh can't hear from God. There's no anointing on the flesh. You, you've got to do it by the Spirit of God. It's got to be done in the Spirit of God. You got to do it uh, not by power nor by might, but by I got his word on. That's what he, he done told us that. And and he you know he told us that we we're, we're gonna do the greater works, and so you know they have to be done in the spirit. The flesh has nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with the greater works. Today we're gonna deal with uh, some more pointers to help us run our race, four through six. And the fourth point I want to share with you is this. Know who's for you, and this is done by faith. You got to know who's on your side. You got to know who's for you. Most times the athlete has a sponsor, am I right? Most times they have a sponsor. Sometimes one athlete may have several sponsors. I don't know if that's because of his gift skills and talents or his popularity or his good looks, but sometimes they have several sponsors. They are the ones who assume the full responsibility for or pays the expenses required 
false fuss. They're the ones who assume the responsibility for that individual and they pay the full amount of money required. You know, they're their sponsor. In our case, our sponsor is Jesus. Right. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. He's paid it all. I don't owe nothing to nobody. He shed it all. He covered me in his blood all, all over, from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Didn't miss a spot. Amen. Jesus is our sponsor. Amen. Amen. You got to know Jesus is our, he is the only sponsor we need to run our race successfully. You listen? The only one we need. How many of you agree that he has assumed full responsibility for us and has paid the complete cost on our behalf? Yes. Anybody in here agree? I know he has. Yes. Nobody else could have done what Jesus did. Nobody Jesus. could have done for us what he did. And because it has already been taken, uh, the, the, the price has already been paid, we can run freely and without hindrances and without encumbrances and without backpacks and all this. You know, he, he's there to support us all the way. Let me stop right here and give you a few words of caution. If you are dependent upon your good health, Wealth, influence, parents, grandparents, career, job, home, land, livestock, paper stock, friends, or any other person or thing to sustain you in this Christian race, you're not going to finish well. Don't mean to hurt your feelings, but you're not going to finish well. And, and not one thing that I name is bad in and of itself. Not one thing that I name is bad in and of itself. But all of it is insufficient compared to Almighty's God, Almighty God's resources. Amen. All of it is insufficient. None of it can carry us from where we are to eternity. It's going to take God to do that and his resources. In this race, you have his assurance that says in Philippians 4.19, and my goal, you got it? Come on. And my God will liberally supply. He will liberally supply. Fill to the full. Fill to the full. Your every need. Every need. According to his riches and glory Lord in Jesus. Christ Jesus. Lord Jesus. I got down here, God will liberally and in parentheses, I got largely, generously, unselfishly, right. open-handedly, lavishly, abundantly, supply. All of that before you get to the supply. He'll fill to the full your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I just love it. And church, that is exactly what God has been doing since this pandemic. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. That's exactly what the Lord God Almighty, our Jesus, has been doing since this pandemic. I want you to know I sleep good at night. I do not toss and turn. God, Jehovah Ezer, is my helper. And I thank God for that. Make sure you do not get it twisted and start depending upon outside sources to help you run your race. Mm -hmm. Jesus wants you to know that he and he alone is your sponsor. Amen. And he is well able. Lord. He's proven himself time and time 
time after time after time after time. I need you to turn to Hebrews 11, 7, Amplified, and read that for me. Prompted by faith, Noah, being forewarned by God. Noah, being forewarned by God, continue. Concerning events of which as yet there was no visible sign, took heed and diligently and reverently constructed and prepared an ark for the deliverance of his own family. My God, Noah's race was to build an ark in preparation for something that was not yet visible. Are y'all listening? Didn't I tell you that to do that, it takes faith? He had to build an ark in preparation for something that they had never seen. Build an ark in preparation for something that had never happened before. And for him to build the ark, for him to get the instructions from the Lord, for him to begin to build the ark, that took faith. Amen? And he had to run his race alone because everybody around him thought he had lost it. And, 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 and that is, he was a trailblazer. He had to run his race alone. Uh -huh. He had to trust God, obey God, and then I got down here and walk in righteousness. The same thing that I've been saying. To complete his race, regardless of the ridicule. Regardless of who, who was on his side or who wasn't on his side. Regardless of who was pulling for him or who wasn't pulling for him. In your race, you have to know who's pulling for you. And stick with them. Amen. Stick with them. Don't turn your back on those that are pulling for you. Noah knew that God was on his side. And he knew that he would have a successful race in building that ark if he just paid, kept his eyes on the prize and paid attention to God and what he was telling him. The width, the height, Everything, the depth, who to put in, who to leave out. You know, he, he had a race to run, y'all. And the only way it was going to uh, uh, be successfully run is that he obeyed. Amen. He trusted. And he stayed in righteousness. Amen? Amen. The fifth point I want to share with you is this. Know who's against you, and this too is done by faith. You got to know it all. You got to know who's against you. And God will let you do that. I'm not referring to other people, church, being against you. I'm talking about the devil and his demonic angels. Paul told us who our enemy is. So we don't have, we don't have to be wondering who, who likes us and who doesn't like us. And uh, I looked up three different translations in order to find the one that specifically explains the warfare we are living in today. And church, we are in a spiritual warfare. We, we are, we are, and it's a daily thing. It's a daily thing. It, it, the devil is not fooling around. And the reason he's not fooling around, you can't dismiss the devil, you know, like it ain't nothing going on. It's something going on, and it's something going on all the time. He is real. I want you to know, I'm not trying to act like, you know, he doesn't exist. No, 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 no. He is real. Uh-huh. The, the, uh, 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 Jesus made that clear, you know. Everything he does has been accelerated. I want you to know that, too. Everything that's happened has been accelerated because he knows his time is drawing near. All right. All right now. He knows he's coming to an end real quick, fast, and unheard. In Ephesians 6.12, the Passion Translation, this is what it says. I, I, I read this one, I read that one, and, read, and then I got to, I said, I like this. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. It's not with human beings. But with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. Mm -hmm. With the highest 
principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms, which means that they are operating here on this earth under the heavenly realm, which is the earth. Number one, they are powerful class of demon, demon gods, little G-O-Ds, that have been loosed, unleashed. I'm experiencing, maybe I should say, seeing and hearing about things and stuff happening to folks and people and things and accidents and all kind of wrecks and bit that I have never heard about in my life. Never heard happening in my life. And you you stop and you 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 think you say, Lord, this here is is the worst that I've ever seen. And then, before you can really get over that, you see, you hear, you, you listen to something else, and you find out that this is the worst that you've ever seen or heard. And, it, and it's, it's not going to get any better, church. That's why we got to stay on the wall. Man. The man of God said it this, this morning. You know, it's no time to be cutting back in prayer, this is the time to step it up. All right. Even when you're driving, even when you're walking into the store, even when you're going to the drugstore, even when you're, you know, going out, out of town, use that time when you're going out of town to just, you know, uh, uh, pray in the spirit. Yeah. Nobody's going to disturb you. Amen. And you're not going to fall out. All right. <laughs> just pray in the spirit. Amen. I'm serious. You know, just walking around the house, I pray in the spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus covers this property. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus covers 9950. Yes. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you are there on 52 acres. Yes. Lord, and, 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 and the one, Father God, that came and took our uh, 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 catalytic converter, Father God, I'm going to pray for them. I, I pray, Father God, I, I pray that they were able to use it, sell it, whatever they needed the money for, Father God, and, and deal with them. Yes. Deal with them, Lord. Yes. You can deal with them better than I can. All right. You know, yes. the, I, I guess what I'm saying is, don't, don't get on his level. Don't get on his level. You stay, and I think uh, Paul told us in Colossians, think on those things that are above and not on those things that are beneath. See, all that kind of stuff is the beneath stuff. And we have to stay in, in if we're going to run our race, we got to keep, keep it looking forward. Amen. Stay looking forward. Don't look to your left, don't look to the right. It'll slow you down. Your head-to-head -head combat is not with human beings. We got that down but with the highest principalities that have been unleashed. The highest authorities that he has have been unleashed on the, on the face of this earth. For they are a powerful class of demon little G.O.D.s and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Those that, that have not uh, received salvation, the love of, of Jesus Christ, they're in bondage. They don't, they don't even realize they're in bondage, but they are in bondage. And they are under the uh, demonic authority. And they will do whatever they, you know, they feel like doing because in bondage, that's the flesh. That's the flesh. And see, we don't operate like that. We follow the Holy Spirit. We stay in our lane. We walk in love. We use the wisdom of God to operate. We move by faith and not by sight. You know, so even Jesus told us in John 10, 10, read that. The thief comes only in order to steal 
and kill and destroy. Jesus said, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. I tell you, that's the Lord God Almighty who is on our side in our race. God wants us to, you know, he wants us to, if you're going to have a life to the fullest and abundance and all of that, I'm telling you, that's somebody that wants you to win. And he wants you to win every time. And he also warned us in John 14, 30, read that one. I will not talk with you much more for the prince, the evil genius. Stop the right there. He called the enemy, the devil, an evil genius. I call him stick with it. He is an evil genius. And he he's he, you know, he's deceptive. He's a liar. He's wicked. And he's always trying to get you to do stuff, you know, uh, when he thinks you're down, when he thinks you're out, when he thinks that you, 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 you're all alone, when he thinks that you're in your pity party. That's when he slides up. He's an evil genius. That's when he comes sliding and slithering up to you to try to speak into your hearing. Jesus said, I will not talk with you much more. For the prince, the evil genius, the ruler of the world is coming. Come on. What else did he say? And he has no claim on me. And I got here, he and he has no claim. And you know what that means? You know, you you when you uh put things in in uh layaway, they call it layaway. You they give you what they say call is a little claim ticket. A claim ticket. And that claim ticket allows you to claim your merchandise. Well, I got here and he has no claim and I am not his merchandise. All right, all right. On me. He has no claim on me and he doesn't have to present a claim ticket for me because I am not his merchandise. He is not picking me up, carrying me nowhere. <laughs> Say that, teacher. Say that. I hope y'all walking with me today. Amen. And secondly, what else does it say? He has nothing in common with me. Stop. That was said even this morning. He has nothing in common with me. How many of you know? And, and the Holy Spirit just you know, just open that up to me. You've been hearing it all your life. Opposites attract. Mm -hmm. The reason the devil is attracted to us, to you, to you, to me, to you, to you, the reason he's attracted to us is because we don't have nothing in common. I don't know if y'all heard him say that uh, this morning when he said that. I say, what the hell you get out of that? He Read my notes. <laughs> we don't have anything in common. He was talking about how he loves to pray. Let me go back to the subject matter. He was talking about how he loves to pray. And, and that, that's real, church. When you love to do something, I love to teach. I love to pray. You know, when you love to do something, you are like a fish out of water with somebody else who, who, who thinks very little of prayer who don't really want to dwell on the word. Are y'all listening to me? And so the enemy comes at us because he already knows without a shadow of doubt he has nothing in common with us. He's going to come at you. He's going to try you. He's going to feed you lies. He's going to tempt deception because he knows that in the real world and that's the spiritual world. He has nothing in common with us. Amen. And he's attracted. I got down here, opposites attract. That's why we are so attractive to him. We're just the opposite. He's evil, we're good. He's wrong and we're right. We're up and he's down under our feet. We're just the opposite from him. 
We love the Lord. He can't stand Jesus. I said, Lord, have mercy. It ain't but one Holy Ghost in this house. And I love it. We are opposites from him. And that's why he's so attracted, attracted to us. We don't have the same, we don't have the same thought pattern. We don't think alike. We don't like to do the same things. We don't like to go the same places. He like to be bop de bop. I like, hey, open him. Hey, yeah. open him. Church, this is real. What else does it say? There is nothing in me that belongs to him. Stop. Did you hear that? There's absolute, absolutely nothing in me, in you, that belongs to him. In other words, he has absolutely no ownership. No. He has no ownership. Continue. And he has no power over me. And he has no power or authority. Right. No control to rule or run me. To rule or run you. You don't have to listen to him. You can shut him off at any time. You can kick him out of your house at any time. Right. Open the car door. Stop at the stop sign. Let him out. At any time. Church, when circumstances come against us to try to get us off course, we must realize they're from the devil. Mm -hmm. From the devil. Mm -hmm. Sixth point I want to make, know who you are. That's very important. You got to know who you are. You have to see Jesus living inside of you. You got to know that he lives inside of you. You got to know that he is there. You got to know that Jesus is living. He's a living being on the inside of you. He gave us the Holy Spirit to dwell being on the inside of us. And then put it in the word. Uh, 1 John 4 and 4, greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Oh yeah. Turn to Hebrews 11, verse 23 first. And this is very real simple. I say the next point is to know who you are. Know who you are. Come on, read it. Prompted by faith, Moses after his birth was kept concealed for three months by his parents because they saw how comely the child was, and they were not over they were not, were not overawed and terrified by the king's decree. Okay. Prompted by faith. Read it again. Prompted by faith, Moses, after his birth, was kept concealed for three months by his parents, because they saw how comely the child was, and they were not overawed and terrified by the king's decree. They were not uh, terrified, they were not overawed by Pharaoh's decree about these babies, you know, about what he was doing. Moses' parents knew they were not like the other people under Pharaoh's rule. Amen. Did, you, you, did you just hear that? They knew that they were not like the other people, all these other folk, all these other Hebrews under Pharaoh's rule, prompted by but didn't I tell you, it's all done by faith, prompted by what? Faith. faith. Moses, after his birth, was kept concealed for three months. It took faith to do that. It took courage to do that. It took knowing who you are to do that. For three months, he was concealed by his parents because they saw how calmly the child was. They saw how different their baby was how peaceful he was. And they were not overawed and terrified by the king's decree. They were not in fear. Let me just put it in right, right. bluntly. They were not in fear about what the, king, what the king said. Come on. Verse 24. 
aroused by faith. How? How were they aroused? By faith. By faith. Moses, when he had grown to maturity and became and become great, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And Moses knew who he was. He knew he was different. That's why, you know, it says he aroused by faith. Moses, when he had grown to maturity and become great, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You know, he, he just wanted to be who he was born to be. And I just said that we got to be who God has created us to be. I can't, I, I, I can, I, can't nobody beat me being TGL. It's not another individual on the face of this earth can beat me being TGL. Because that's who God created me to be. This is what the Lord wants you to know today about you. Let me see. Psalms 139, 14. King James. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I will praise thee, O Lord, because I know I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. Marvelous are your works, O Lord. And that my soul knows it. And my right soul, way. even my flesh knows it. You know, my mind, my will, my emotions, everything know that I've been made well. I've been put together well by the Lord God Almighty. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. It, 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 if anything needs to be corrected, he can do it. See, not, not you, but he can do it. He knows how to do it. All he got to do is get apart from the man, the, uh, the uh, uh, factory, and, and, and deal with it in me. Just put it in me. Right. The factory is with him. He knows how to do it. He knows where the piece is that I'm missing. He can do it. Jesus. He wants me to run my race well. So he doesn't want me missing any parts. Lord Jesus, Romans 8.37, King James Version. This is what the Lord wants you to know today about you. Come on. Nay, in all these things. And before she continues, there was a list of, of things that we could go through. You know, uh, let's, let's look at that list. Nay, in all these things. It was just a list of stuff that, that could have happened. Here, let me see. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for, they, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Oh, but nay, even though all of this may happen to us, even though we may go through some changes, even though it, uh, we have negative circumstances to come up, even though situations come up, even though the bank want to turn us away, even though, you know, sickness and disease try to attack our bodies, in all of these things, what happened? We are more than conquerors. We are what? More than conquerors. We are what? More than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. Through, through who? Not in and of ourselves, but through who? Through Jesus, him that loves us. I love him. We are not. Don't let the devil ever tell you you are weak worm out of dust. You're not. You're more than a conqueror. Through him that loves us. Lord, I thank you for that. He's cheering us on. You see, if you don't know who you are, then you don't know what you can do. That's real. Let me say that again. If you don't know who you are, then you don't know what you can do. We'll discuss that the next time. Repeat after me. I am more than a conqueror. I am in this Christian race to win. And win I shall. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you what I want you to take with you today. You have cheerleaders in ch chapter 11 of Hebrews. They are now referred to as our cloud of witnesses. You have brothers and sisters in Christ here on this earth. And we are your earthly 
crowd, not cloud, crowd, C-R-O-W-D, of witnesses. We're cheering you on. I love to see my spiritual children doing well. That brings me great joy. I can just smile by myself. I can just twinkle, tw tw twinkle, twinkle my toes by myself when I think of the good, goodness of God and how good he has been to, that, to his children. Amen. And then to put them under my uh, spiritual covering. That blesses me. I rejoice. And I do like, like Paul say, I, and I rejoice again. Yeah. Every time you flow and operate in Matthew 5, 13 through 16, every time you be the salt, every time you be the light, every time you be that city that's set on the hill, know that you are running your race and got backers to boot cheering for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They see you what you're doing. They see the effect that you're having on people. They hear what you're saying. They hear your witness. They hear your testimony. They are listening and they are just smiling and cheering you all. We got another one. We got another one. In the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Number two, remember Hebrews 12, 1 through 2, 1 and 2. In order to run well, we must cast off every weight and the sin that tries to cling to us. We got to cast it off. <coughs> Excuse me. Lighter means faster. Amen. Lighten your load. Lighter means faster. If you really want to run your very best, you've got to make sure you are not weighed down by the wrong load or a bulky load. For example, four inch heels. <laughs> Flowing robes. Robes and all these this trainer robes following you. Or big old three-piece suits and you know you trying to run a race? No, 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 no. This is not the attire for running. Amen. The weight and sin cannot be dangling, hanging, and clinging to us. Amen. And finally, though we have witnesses who are cheering for us above, we have some examples and encouragers and pace sets. Right here in this earth, yeah. among us, in this, in this house, yeah. in this house, yeah. I declare that in this house, they are steadfast, unmovable, yes. abounding, always in the work of the Lord, for they know that work in him is not in vain. See, I already know that what I am doing right now is not in vain. Yeah. I'm going to keep doing it until Jesus come home. Yeah. I'm telling you. Until he return, until or, or until he give me another assignment, something different. But I don't foresee that. You know, God is good, and He's good to the ones that are faithful and faithful to Him. Church, I really believe we are the last of the last generation. And we are that generation that's going to break the record in this race. How many of you believe that? We're going to break it. Because we're going to get it done. We are that generation to get it done. That first generation that Moses was, uh, was uh, hauling across the wilderness and through the wilderness and then in the, in the desert and the wilderness and across the Red Sea, that was not the generation that made it in. How many of you know that? Amen. I think it was only two out of that generation that really made it in. Joshua and Caleb. Repeat after me. I am more than a conqueror. I am in this Christian race to win. And win I shall. Praise God. That's what I have for you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. God has promised us long life. Lord, 
and we are going to declare, and we have been declaring, and we will continue to declare the works of the Lord. Yes. Amen? Amen? Everywhere we go, people will know who we are in Christ Jesus. And even if we just say a, a sentence or a word, they're going to know who we are. And they're going to know that we're different. They will already know that we're different. Let's, re let's repeat our salvation declaration. I know everybody in here is already saved, but it's good to repeat it. I come to you in the name of Jesus, Father. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. The Bible says if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I will be saved. Found in Romans 10 and 9. I believe in my heart and I confess out of my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for a new start. Thank you for a new start. In my life. In my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Give Jesus a praise. Now. You may be seated. A few weeks ago, I was teaching a series about our change of seasons, the change in our seasons. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I saw a 